Ow. Hey guys, welcome to week 13 of Books Being Sick. I am Nick. Thanks for being here. I am just going to quickly adjust this because I think it's a little too low. Is this right? Whoa. Haha. <laughs> Come with me. Okay, there we go. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So thanks for being here. Week 13, Books Being Sick. This is 13 weeks in of uh, doing these weekly update videos on my reading life and just my life in general. Thank you so much for being here. Happy to have you. We got some stuff to talk about today. I've got recent reads I'm going to talk about, some new book pickups. I feel like pretty much every week I've got new book pickups. I picked up the Spinebreaker order, so I'm going to show you that. And just some other, just some other like lifely, lifely type things, you know what I mean? I have two glasses of water today, one here and one here. So this is going to be a hydrated video as opposed to a caffeinated one. Let's see if there's a difference. Maybe there's no difference. Maybe it doesn't matter. I don't know. Help me, guys. Whatevs. Let's get into the Spinebreaker shirts. I am so excited. How this worked, for those interested, is I put out these Spinebreaker shirts for a pre-order, the first pre-order back in February. And it went really well. If I'm, I, I'm kind of blown away by this. If, if I'm completely honest with you, when I sent out these shirts and I was inquiring with different printing places on how much something like this would cost and what are the logistics and everything, I had kind of told them, I think probably like 20 or 25 shirts is, is all I'm going to need. <laughs> so they recommended, why don't you do a pre-order so then you know the exact number of shirts that you're actually going to need as opposed to like pre-ordering or like pre-ordering them myself and then selling them. And so I was like, okay, let's do that. And then the first order, uh, pre-order went live and it sold about 130 shirts, which I was blown away by. I was like, holy man, that is crazy town. And then when the shirts came in and I shipped them out, I kind of showed everybody what they actually look like. And they are like, I'm not, I'm not trying to like sell, like sell or whatever, but they're comfort colors. And the quality of the comfort color shirt is just, it's my favorite shirt that I have. Like it, it really does fit really nice. And it's just, it just feels good. Anywho. So I shared that, that I did a second pre-order and, and like this is not to be like, ooh, look at me. I'm, I'm just like, I was genuinely pretty like blown away by this. Sold 230 on the second one. So like almost 350, 360 shirts total. And I'm so excited that there are going to be that many Spinebreaker shirts out in the wild. People people wearing them and uh, hopefully starting conversations on why you would ever break the spines of your books. And you can just tell them because it's the way to go. It's the way I live my life and it's the way you should live your life. I don't know. You just say whatever you want. Or you just say, no, I don't even do this. I just like it. Um, so anyways, the second pre-order shirts will be shipped out by Monday at the latest. I've, I'm just getting some poly mailers in, and then they'll be shipped out. So thank you so much to everybody that did order one. I uh, loved the place. The Whitley, I'll just give like a really quick shout out to Whitley. Such a killer printing place if you live in the Hamilton area, or if you just, I think worldwide. <laughs> I'm, I'm just lucky enough to live down the street from them, but they just work out of this old, old factory that is just so, so cool. Like You just feel cool picking up your order here. When I was here too, there was, I drive a Jeep. I love love my Jeep, and something that Jeep owners tend to do is put rubber ducks on other Jeep owners' cars, like it's like a thing. So we have a big bag of rubber ducks in the back of our Jeep, and then whenever we see a duck, we, or a Jeep, I mean, we, we make sure to duck it. And so that is what we did. <laughs> um, anywho, ding. Man, I thought I muted that this time. So the Spinebreaker shirts will be sent out uh, very, very soon. Thank you guys so much again, and I actually have another design that if you're a Patreon member, you've seen it. I'm so excited. I'm going to wait until everything's shipped out and the spine breakers are all taken care of before I share that one. And then I'll share with you the new design that I'm really excited about. And then I might at the same time, I've had even more people ask about the spine, spine breaker shirt. So I might kind of let these go live again for like a third pre-order along with the new one. Or maybe I'll just retire these. I'm not really sure. But uh, again, just thank you. So enough of that. Enough of that for sure. Let's get into some recent reads. Not really a ton on deck for this, but I did read my favorite person ever, Claire Keegan. I did read So Late in the Day by her. Now, I didn't realize that this copy, so I'll show you real quick here. I've got this one, and small things like these, bam, as well as Foster. And what I love that they did here is these just look 
so fantastic together, especially on the shelf. You know, they're just, uh, it's just a pretty, pretty set to have. And I didn't realize that so late in the day contains the story so late in the day go figure but it also has two other short stories in it as well one is the antarctica and one is the long and painful death both of which i have not read but i did read so late in the day i'm really curious on antarctica because let me just give you the quick thing here a married woman travels out of town to see what it's like to sleep with another man and ends up in the grip of a possessive stranger perfect i'm sold <laughs> i want to read that right away but so late in the day was Beautiful. I'll, I'll read the thing for So Late in the Day here, too, because it'll do a better job explaining it than I will. In So Late in the Day, a civil servant faces a long weekend as, as his mind agitates over a woman with whom he could have had spent his life had he acted differently. In the Oh, that's it. <laughs> and yeah, that is what it's about. It's basically the birth and death of this relationship that uh, our main character has with this woman. It's very simply but beautifully told and i really loved it i just love claire keegan man she is just she can write about a bird taking a poop on a rock and i'd be sold <laughs> i don't know uh, okay so also reading cujo cujo is the patreon book club books are sick book club book this month i'm 160 pages in i'm trying to read it slow so that it can stay in line with our reading goals I'm, i was really tempted to just go right through it but I'm, I'm taking my time so that i'm kind of just there are a lot of people in the patreon that have finished it already but i'm trying to uh be in line with the reading goals that we have set and so that is what i'm doing hoping to be at 200 by tomorrow and then i'll post an update video on the on the thing for that it's really good i am so surprised at how much i'm loving cujo not what i expected at all from this book and i mean that in a good way because i don't know if i was expecting great things from cujo if i'm honest before going into it and i have been hit with greatness <laughs> it really is fantastic and a pleasant surprise so cujo has been fantastic another one that i'm reading i should mention too i did start to uh... Yep, there goes that. I uh, also just started restarted reading The Winners, which is book three in the Beartown trilogy. It is really, really good. You know, it's just one of those things where, I because I read, I've mentioned this before, but because I read all of these books so close together, I think I got just overloaded with the repetitiveness in, in terms of, you know, Beartown is a hockey town, and really driving the point home that Beartown is obsessed with hockey. And it just was getting a little bit, you know, it was kind of hurting my brain a little bit. But now that I've taken a bit of a break and thrown some books in between, I'm finding this so much more enjoyable. And it really is fantastic. I hope I'm not, I hope I'm not like underselling this book because the I Bear Town was unbelievably good, as was Us Against You. And the winners I know was fantastic. I would just recommend not reading them back to back to back. Take take a month or two off in between them to really get like the most out of these books. I am also reading, I just started, so I, I did a little thing where I was like, please help me choose my next nonfiction book. And by and by and by lar by far the, the number one answer was The Devil in the White City. But <laughs> I decided to start reading the things they carried because I just it was one of those things. I was sitting on my desk, I read the first page, and then I ended up reading the first chapter, and I quite quite enjoyed it and i'm going to continue on with it i did not realize how literal this title is the things they carried i'm only a chapter in but it so far is quite literally about the things they carried this is about we're following a, a, a troop of soldiers in vietnam they're all quite young i believe the sergeant is like 24 years old and we're just going through all the things that they carry and that might sound kind of bland and kind of boring but it is absolutely fascinating and i really like how tim o'brien is kind of throwing quips of dialogue that they um would have said and little story points in there in, in in between what they are physically carrying it's really well done and really fascinating i'm really loving this and i'm probably going to finish it this week at some point the things they carried by tim o'brien again i can't give too much of a, a review on it because i'm only a, a chapter in 30 pages in but i'm really really liking that so far so that has going to be my next uh it's going to be my next nonfiction book i will also just share with you a few quick pickups here i had to make an emergency run to a party store yesterday because it is a costume day for one of my sons today at school and i didn't know that until about 7 p.m last night and he decided he wanted to be paul stanley from kiss he's five years old kiss is his favorite band <laughs> and so i was like oh okay so i had to run out get some face paint a, a wig and just yeah, anyways, point being, 
I was right beside a bookstore. And so I decided to make a little solo trip myself into the bookstore, which was a good idea because I got three books here that I'm pumped on. This one is so, so popular on the socials right now. And I was really excited to see it. This is the first time I've actually seen it in store up here. It is The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wang. This is a cover that I have not seen before. The cover I see most often is that beautiful cover that you've probably all seen. I think it has painted edges and illustrations in it that are just gorgeous. This is not that one, but it is, it is, it's got this gold, fla- uh, what do you call that? Flaky stuff. <laughs> and I actually, I actually quite like it. It's simple, but I like it. And I have heard, I have not heard a single negative thing about the Sword of Kaigen. And so I'm very, very pumped to get into this. And I love love, love that this is a one-off. I feel like so many fantasy books are trilogies or five books long, 10 books long when it comes to fantasy exclusively. I love that this is a very highly regarded fantasy book that is a singular book. Can't wait to read The Sword of Kaigen. Was very happy to see that one. I also picked up, I'm getting into Kafka lately, and they had this copy of The Trial by Kafka. So I had to get this. I love this. I love this cover so, so much, and it goes really well, excuse me, it goes really well with my The Metamorphosis and Other Stories copy, so these are just, you know, it's just a nice little side-by-side there. So I got The Trial. I think The Trial is his most completed book? You guys might have to tell me. I don't know if that's true, but excited to have The Trial. I also... There is a gentleman on TikTok named Michael Kirst who is a history book amazing guy. (laughs) I can't think of the word. He's like, he he reads primarily history books, I believe. He reads everything, but he reads a lot of history books, which is unique on socials. I don't think you see a lot of that. And so I asked him, you know, I don't read a ton of history books. I know I'm reading the things they carried, but like history, history books. And I asked him, you know, what, what would you recommend to me as someone that's not really delved into this section of books before? And he said to get Agrippina by Emma Southen. And so I did. And I walked into that section of the bookstore that I had never been in before, I don't think. European history or wherever it was. I can't even remember. And I was just like, man, this is a different world. I don't know what any of these words mean. But this, he said, I was, I would absolutely love because it's not terribly long and it is just fascinating, he says. It's the about the most extraordinary, extraordinary woman of the Roman world. I am real, real excited to get into a history book here, and I, I don't know, really excited for that. Really appreciate that recommendation from Michael Kirst. If you haven't checked him out, please do. He's he's just a really fantastic guy, and he's like jacked too. This guy, like, ugh, you know, I wish I could be like that. Roadhouse on Prime. I watched last night, and I loved it. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze is one of my favorite movies ever. I watch it all the time. I just It's one of those guilty pleasure movies that I love. And so I watched the remake last night, and I thought it was great. I thought Conor McGregor played his role perfectly. You know, it's just a, it was just, I just had a good time. I just had a good time watching that. I, this weekend, I am helping my wife at a market in Guelph tomorrow that I'm pretty excited about. She's selling her yarn there. It's like a vintage market. It's going to be, it's kind of a nighttime market too. So that's unique and it's going to be fun. And then on Sunday, I'm shooting an elopement, which I'm really excited for. My my work life is kind of taken off from here. I've got, uh, I've had such a long winter break, it feels like. And then I was looking at my calendar and we pretty much got shoots every single weekend until December, starting this weekend. So it's going to be a lot of fun, but it's going to be very busy. It's going to kind of be a switch into a different style of life, but I'm ready for it. I just also wanted to quickly shout out the new Patreoners for this week. Uh, So I'm going to do that real fast. It won't be as crazy as last time, but we got Cynthia Weidman. We got Jesus. Yes, I got him. Uh, (laughs) We got Elisa Travis uh, Travis Sutherland, I should say. Gail Kindred, Charl, Charlie, I don't know why I cut off Charl, Charlie, Nikki, Matilda, Tilda Burkle, Lise, Filthy Chai, Lorna Murdoch, Bad Times Limited, Morrow, Darby, T. Rich, Fable and Fantasy, and Mediocre Reader. I love that title, <laughs> Mediocre Reader. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. And I also should just mention that we put up a poll 
a long list for the April book of the month so far. So what we're going to do is there's a long list of books and the top four will move on to like the final selection. I think the top four right now are The Road, The Secret History, East of Eden, and... Oh, I can't remember what the fourth one is, but that's up there. This has been week 13. Thank you guys so much for tuning into these weekly videos. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, see you later.